All right, uh, l- let's get into it. Michigan wins uh, today. They played Washington, um, you know, a, a, a Pac-12 team. They win the game 31-10. to 10. Uh, Just high level, you know, what are your thoughts on, on the game? What's your, you know, what's your, your instant reaction? Once again, and I'll do this every time we do this post game. I'll continue to sound like a broken record, but I want people to understand why I say the things I'm saying, okay? When I judge this team on a week-to-week basis, it's with the idea and the goal that under year seven of Jim Harbaugh, no matter new quarterback, new defensive coordinator, uh, coordinator and McDonald, uh, Mike McDonald, um, you know, changing the offense the last couple of years, whatever it is, new quarterback, whatever it is, you know, I don't care. This is year seven of Jim Harbaugh. So the goal should be to win the big 10 to beat Ohio state. That's what I'm measuring you on. And every week I'm judging how close you are uh, or how uh, uh, on, firmly on a path you are to do that. Okay. So that being said, it's not much I learned this week that I didn't already know. And I'm not any closer to say that we're turning towards that direction than I have last week or even when we did the pre-show, uh, pre-season show. And the reason why, it's like, for one, there was a lot of good things that happened in this game, just like last week. You know, Michigan dominated. You look at the scoreboard, Michigan dominated, you know, offense and defense, you know. Um, and they, they – they, they, physically overwhelmed Washington. Um, but that's the big picture. That's if you're just looking at the game like, oh, this is great. But when you really break it down, they had 44, 45 passing yards, man. 45 passing yards. Michigan State got that on one play today off a of flea flicker on a very first play. 65-yard mm-hmm. passing play against Youngtown State. Okay? Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't, and neither should you, Michigan fans out there, feel good about that, okay? Oh, but look how we we were gashing them, you know, like Washington couldn't stop us on the ground. You're 100% correct, they cannot. But once again, and I would assume and hope people, year seven of hardball, want the Big Ten title, expect to beat Ohio State at least once out of seven years. I would expect that. So if you expect the same things I do, what I need you to understand is that we're not going to rush for 250 yards plus against Ohio State. Okay? It's not going to happen. Yeah, they lost today. You know what? You know why they lost today? Oregon was incredibly creative with their play calling. They ran the ball. They got uh, uh, Brown Jr. In, in rhythm. They used their tight ends effectively. Um, they, they spread that huge Ohio State and fast Ohio State defense out and they exposed them. And and that's what a good office office uh office of scheme does. And look, I'm not I know we're gonna get into it, but overall I'll I'll stick to the overview. Good win. You continue to cross it off your board. You're going forward. As you like to say your goals are technically are still in front of you. Everything that you want to achieve, you didn't lose. Uh, but there's a lot to work on and still a lot of questions, especially especially offensively. Defense, you're looking really good. Offensively, a lot of questions to be answered. Yeah. It, it, you know, to see – to me, the thing that's exciting is to see how fast that defense is. Like, those guys yeah. get to the ball. They – you know, that that's one side of the ball that is, to me – and in, in, in maybe not set in stone, but nonetheless, to hold Washington to 10 points, like even if they are a team that is offensively challenged, like that still is impressive to hold a power five team to 10 points. So I, I'm, I'm still going to give that side of the ball the credit that I, I feel it deserves. Even though Montana um, held them to seven last week? Yes, because it, the thing that I think about is is I, I think – a lot about last year and i think of right in week one when alabama played missouri i don't think anybody at that point saw alabama and said this is without a doubt the best team in the country 
You know what I mean? And by the time the end of the season happened, I think it was essentially a consensus. Like, yeah, no, everyone feels that way now. You know what I mean? Like, so it's got what you look like from week one, even to week two, like can be very different. Right. So I, I'm not going to, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, Washington lost the game. So it, it's not going to be anything where I'm, you know, going to defend them. But nonetheless, like it's still, it's at the end of the day, it's still a power five team. Like, and they went to work last week, just like after they lost the game. I'm sure they broke down film. I'm sure they looked at the mistakes and all of the things that they did poorly mm -hmm. and tried to work on those things throughout this past week. And then, you know, came to Ann Arbor, Michigan, ready to execute a game plan where they felt like they would be successful. So I'm still going to give the defense their their kudos, their their love, because they I, I think they deserve it. Um, that defense was suffocating and, and not sure I could say enough about it. Um, but all, offensively, so offensively, half of the offense is really, really good. The the run game well, is really good. No like, top of the nation. I, I can I'll, I'll, I can feel com as of now. I can comfortably say we're one of our I'll, I'll put us in the top five rushing offense in the nation. The I mean, to of run for three hundred and forty three yards. Weeks is hard because, like, to your point, Des, you know, like Washington knew what we're going to do coming in. You know, like he and, and they had plenty of film. Right last week, don't you don't tell me Jimmy Lake and and his defensive staff didn't sit down and say they're going to run the football. Everybody knows how Jimmy is, Jimmy Har Harbaugh. Right, mm -hmm. they they knew that coming in. They know they're going to run the football. They knew that they had to worry about Corum and Has and Haskins, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter, and that's very very impressive when pe when teams know that you're going to do something, and you still do it in dominating fashion. That's saying something. So I, I give I I I definitely agree with you there. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, that, that, that side is amazing. I, Hassan Haskins, like, see, like we talked about it last week of just how physical he ran the football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and honestly, he took it to another level this week. Like today, like just watching him run through tacklers and, and arm tackles and just run like, and, and that's the thing, like to kind of take a step back to have a man run through other men, like that, that's a, I, I think of in, in, you know, I don't, I don't think Hassan Haskins is at this level, but I think of beast mode of Marshawn Lynch of just, you know, how he has, has given feedback and just said in interviews of just like, oh yeah, when you run through somebody's face, like that's, that, that, that changes things, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, as far as football. Um, so, so extremely impressive. Uh, Blake Corum is the real deal. I, I, I don't think, I, I think that, Michigan backfield is is legitimate. It's legit. Like it is. You have you have talent back there. Um, you know, we 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 saw those two featured. You know, it was a, a obviously a closer game this week than last week was. So we didn't see Donovan Edwards. We didn't see you know the the, the freshman. A little but bit. Nonetheless, um, those guys are legit, man. Those yeah. guys are legit. I, I think they are they are two guys that you can lean on. And it's a it's such a good balance. Like it's such a good balance. Their running styles are very different, but they're both they protect the ball, they run hard, and they're explosive. Um, you know, so so run game, no issues, no no problems at all. Uh, the the tough part is is coming out of a game where you played a power five opponent and you only had fifteen pass attempts. Like that's that's just tough. That's tough for me. Um, you know, we we've talked about it. You know, even last week of you know, Kate, I mean, think think of it this way: the, we are now two weeks into the season. Cade McNamara has twenty six pass attempts. Wow! In the regular season, mind you, and and I'm just gonna. DJ Stroud had fifty, had over fifty today. But what, I'm sorry, I shouldn't compare. All right. well, I mean, and 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 Bryce Young. Let's 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 go with him. Right. So he had his first start a week ago. He had more pass attempts than that. And just in his first start. So it's 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 and it, 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 it's not anything where I'm, you know, trashing Michigan. Like, no, the no, the thought no. process is in it, it. Here's my thought process. And, and if and hopefully it helps people understand my thought process is I am trying. 
I am holding Michigan to a standard of I, how can you beat Ohio State and how can you get to Indianapolis? Right. Because it's not – at the end of the day, it's not going to be – it's not 15 pass attempts. Like, it's just – that is just not going to happen. Like, because you look at, we watched the game together. We watched the Ohio State game or the, the first half of the game together. Right. We watched it together and watching, you know, uh, uh, you know, Anthony, I think his name's Anthony, Anthony sure, Brown, but the starting quarterback yeah. for Oregon mm-hmm. of making big throws down the field. And Cade made a really big throw last week to Ronnie Bell. Um, who's unfortunately injured now, but and then he also made a really big back shoulder throw this week, this game to Cornelius Johnson early in the game. I mean, that was like, think about this the Cornelius Johnson completion was, if I'm not mistaken, in the first quarter, and that was 33 yards. Cade only had 11 yards, 11 more yards after that. Like, that's when you when you break it down like that, like to me, that's just we're not. We're not calling plays with the end in sight. And it, to me, because I, it, and my thing is, uh, show me before we actually are going to, going to do it. Right. So the, the odds are, yes, it's, it's possible that we could have to call a play. Let's, let's just say Wisconsin. Cause I think we can both agree that's going to be the next big test for Michigan. Right. So let's say you get in the Wisconsin game and you have to throw the ball 50 times. Or let's say say forty. Let's let's not go crazy. Let's say you have to throw the ball forty times. There's a chance that Cade could perform and could be flawless in those forty pass attempts, right? There's a chance that could happen because it, it just it just it hasn't not happened, right? No, but at the same time, too, he could he could make a lot of mistakes in those forty pass attempts, right? So we we just don't know. And my philosophy and my thought process is why not try to have him have 40 pass attempts against Western Michigan where if he do, if he's not great the pressure's not on like we're still going to win the game right like right. so that that would be my my thought process and you know we we've got friends collectively that are just like well why would you want you know uh uh Cade to be thrown out there against Western Michigan and I'm like because if he makes mistakes against Western Michigan, the Michigan football team can overcome them because they're just a better team. And the same thing with Washington. I truly felt like Michigan's roster is just is just better than Washington. Right. So I felt like even had Cade made a couple, you know, bad throws, let's say he threw two picks today, I still felt like Michigan was better. Like, so my thing is, 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 Right, go through the trial and error and see what you have in the guaranteed games where in it, it, it where it's a game that let's let's keep it with Western, right? It doesn't it Kate could have thrown five picks against Western Michigan. Michigan was going to win that football game. Yeah, absolutely. But if I can understand as a coach, as a let's say a quarterback's coach in a in an OC, Josh Gaddis, right? If I understand that. Kate, right? Let, let's say we get to the end of that game. He's thrown five picks. We still win the game, whatever. But now I know as an offensive coordinator that Kate just does it. He's not processing the information correctly, right? He's not being coachable. He's not doing the things that I ask him to do. He's not reading the right keys, right? I can go to to either go to JJ or I, I can I can make adjustments, right? Because at the end of the day, if I'm Josh Gaddis, it's my livelihood that's on the line, right? Because if the office doesn't look good, it's on me. It's not on Jim Harbaugh. Like ultimately it's on Harbaugh, but I could be the guy that's getting fired. So to me, that's what, that's why I'm, I'm so passionate and why, you know, you see me on Twitter at all go podcast one, why I talk about, you know, that the, the, the fact that Michigan should have been throwing the ball, probably 80 times by the time it's, we got to the not, end of this game. It's about throwing a ball, too. It, it, it's also it, – it goes – because this week, it went beyond just throwing the ball. Because, for one, that's, that's a given. It's also, like, the lack of creativity with the play calling. It's just like – like it's like even when they would do a passing play, it, 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 it's like it – the few bubble screens that they try, you know, they're not having good execution, which is why you need to continue to rep it because clearly your guys aren't 
Your outside receivers aren't picking up their blocks. You have to rep it and rep it and rep it. And it's not going to just work doing it in practice. You have to figure it out in the game. And it's like the people, like the friends that you were referring to and people like that. What I was really, actually to oppose that, I was really shocked when I was going on Twitter and I was looking at what, you know, a lot of writers from Michigan and people who cover Michigan, you know, from a journalism standpoint and when they would do comments about make comments about the game seeing other fans and in, interactions and responses a lot of the fans were in lockstep with us like the offense looked really boring really boring passing and, and and the main sentiment that i saw and i would text this to you is that people were like well if you don't have any confidence in your quarterback why is he playing like you you your 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 play calling is predicated on basically like you're trying to protect your quarterback you don't try you know don't want him to do too much. I mean, for God's sakes. I mean, you can't even get to 20 passing attempts in the game. Like, come on, this is ridiculous. I know that you're gashing the team. But it's because mm-hmm. you're gashing where it's like, okay, you can take more chances. Fine, first and 10. You know, you're getting five yards to pop on a run. Five to six yards. I saw at one point Blake Corn was averaging 9.1 yards per carry. Insane. That's silly. That's that insane. is silly. Right? Okay, fine. We know you knew early in the first half. Okay, we can run as we can run at will against this team. That's not a problem, right? So okay, first and ten, one time. Why don't I do a play action pass? Take a shot deep. Okay, fine. You don't get it. Second and ten. We're behind schedule now. You're gashing this team. You're going to pick it right back up. Take some chances because and you know what? Even the announcer, I can't think of his name. Brian McDonough. Or is it Brian McDonough that was tonight? I can't think. I forgot the name. The announcer said it multiple times uh, during the game tonight. Um, look, clearly Michigan's be a little bit more conservative with their play calling. They're trying to, you know, run a football. But this is not going to cut it to beat Ohio State, Penn State. Everybody sees that. So that's why it's like, okay, this is good that you're winning. But are you really getting better? What are the right. indications and signs that things are changing? Because as of now, there's – Desmond, people out, great people out there, great Michigan fans all across the world that are watching this right now. Think about this. Even the better years on the hardball, it's not really any different than anything you've seen in the past. Nope. Because I, I can list, you know, running backs of, you know, Karan Higdon and Devion Smith. It's like you've you've had running backs who were successful. Now, granted, You've never had a running back average, you know, 9.4 yards of carry, anything no. like that. Like that's a, you know, that's an anomaly. But we we have seen like you said, we have we have seen a Jim Harbaugh coach team in Ann Arbor who was good at playing bully ball because that's exactly what I I, I think Michigan did today. And that and and I want to take a step back before I even complete that thought is Winning, winning the game. There's nothing wrong with winning a game. I'm not going to complain about Michigan right. winning a game. About. That's not what we're talking about. But the but it, from everyone who is in our private, who's in our chat right now, the 62 people who are who are here, right? If I'm wrong, let me know. But your goal is to beat Ohio State and go to Indianapolis as the Big Ten East representative. Absolutely. If I'm mistaken, let me know. But I'm pretty sure I'm not. And if that is the case, you are not going to get there ha- averaging 13 pass attempts a game. It's just not going to happen. And you can, you can, you know, say however much we're complaining or any, anything like that. Like, but what you're telling me and the things that I am saying align, you're saying I want to beat Ohio State. Right. And I also want to go to Indianapolis. Well, what I'm saying aligns with that. You're not going, you're not, you're just not going to do that. You're not going to do that because at the end of the day, outside of army, there's no team that can do that. There's, there's no team running the the spread offense that can have 13 pass attempts that is going to beat a high level opponent. If you go, go back to the, um, to the playoff games, like in the last four years, mm-hmm. go back to those games. The teams that won did not throw the ball anything less than 25 to 30 times because you just it, it, that's just the the 2021 and you know that that's a new age of college football. It's it's off it's offensive football. 
You have to be able to put points on the board. You're it, the the year. You know, 2013 was the last year. That was when, if I'm not mistaken, Alabama won the national championship, and they just ran the ball and played defense. They were the last team to be able to do that. Right. Since then, it's it has not happened. It hasn't happened, and it won't. It no. won't. I, I just, that's just I, where that's where college football is moving to. So. It's just, like I understand it. Like, yes, you you beat Washington and you beat a, a, a Pac-12 team. You beat a Power 5 team. And I understand it. And that is Michigan did. I, I want to be very clear. Michigan did a good thing today. They came out and they dominated the game really throughout, even though the scoreboard didn't always show that they dominated the game. Right. But nonetheless, like when you look down the road, you've got two weeks until you play Wisconsin. If this pass game is not ready to to be leaned on by then, you're going to lose that game. Yeah. And that's and that's and I and, and I'm on your side. I don't want Michigan to lose that game. But if this pass game does if if everybody who's here, the 70 people that are here right now, is fine with Michigan playing football this way. I, I can tell you, you're going to end up the same place that Jim Harbaugh Harper, has always ended Harper, up. Harper, and, you're you're going to be in your third place in the in the in the division, and you're not going to be in Indianapolis. That that's the reality, whether you like it or not. Yeah, but I, I think, and I, I was as you're talking, I'm looking at that. I, I finally went over to the comments. I'm watching the D Brown and uh, Marcus uh, Gredon, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Gredon. Now, I watched some of these some some comments from certain fans saying stuff like, you know, well, the running game was so easy, or like Ohio State they improved they could stop the run. The point, the reason why you can get the reason why we could we could gash Western Washington is because we're bigger than they are. Okay. We're bigger and more physically imposing than their defensive line in their front seven. When you play against a Penn State, a Wisconsin, a Ohio State, we're not bigger than they are. We're at, at the very least, especially on equal, okay, it is very, very difficult to go in a game like that and just say, and anybody knows what we're going to do, we're going to run the ball down your throat. It's just, it's hard to do. And yes, I know what Minnesota did. I know what Minnesota did against Ohio State. For one, the running back that they had, um, his name is, oh, his, um, Ahim, I can't, I, Ibrahim. 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 you know, he, that's an NFL caliber running back, and I, may, maybe Has, ha, Haskins and Corn will be one day. We'll see. But, you know, it's the first game of the year for one. And, and yeah, he gashed them. But if for one, you got to remember, he got one of those runs on a really long play on a fourth down, right? Uh -huh. So you got to keep that in mind. But he was very effective. But it, it and if you remember also in that game, it wasn't just Ibrahim. Ibrahim established with the run game, but also – Tanner Morgan made some big throws in that game, too. Because Tanner Morgan is an experienced Big Ten quarterback, right? So mm -hmm. it's like that's our point. You can be very effective with the run all you want to. But if you're going to beat the better teams, you have to be able to throw the football when you need to. And still, after week two, they have not proven that. And I'm telling you guys, it doesn't work like a switch. And yeah. we have plenty of history in the hop to see it. We have done as many times having a good team running through September with all these games at home because we're bigger and better. But then when we play a better, a team that's just as good and we try to do the same wham and dies up the middle, it ain't going to work all day. It's just, it is what it is. And we're going to set ourselves up for failure, for a letdown. And that's what we don't want. That's the main thing. That's all we're saying, guys. We're, no one's complaining. We're happy about the win, but we want something different. I know you guys want it. I want it. Okay. I want it. I want to be able to on conference championship Saturday to lock in and watch my team walk out on it. Okay. But ha we have to be something different. That's, that's our point. 